I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things video short. Not Dr. Seuss, too. Woke Wednesday takes on the canceling of Dr. Seuss. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, share, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, making the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get our app. It's available on all major platforms. Sharing is caring when it comes to Higher Things content. And donate. A tax-deductible gift to Higher Things keeps us doing the work of making those gifts known to youth and young adults. And it's for youth and young adults. It's for us, too, as old people. Is the executive director of Higher Things. Her staff calls her the big boss lady. <laughs> um, Erica, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Pastor Burkhart? It's certainly good to see you. You are uh, a former um, public school teacher and our executive director, which makes you um, as close as we can get to a res our resident ex ex expert on wokeness. Right. So, um, yeah. Why, how, what, Seuss, really? Yeah, what's up with that? So did you see like all the memes and stuff on social media this week? Um, kind of kind of talking about Dr. Seuss. Um, so actually on Tuesday, I believe you and, and Dr. Seuss, Seuss share a birthday, right? It's actually Theodore Seuss Geisel is his name. His, um, his nom de plume is Dr. Seuss. But um, they, the Dr. Seuss Enterprises, which is the people who kind of hold his estate, Dr. Seuss or uh, Theodore Geisel has actually passed away made a statement on Tuesday, which was his birthday, that um, they had actually decided last year to end some publication and licensing of um, some books by, by Theodore Seuss uh, Geisel. Um, and the, they were specific titles, and the titles included his first uh, book writing, uh, which was called And to Think I Saw It on Mulberry Street, which was written in 1937, and If I Ran a Zoo, which was written in 1950. Um, the reason they stated was uh, these books portray people in ways that are hurtful and wrong. Um, the business and the decision came after working with a panel of experts, including educators, uh, and reviewing its catalog of titles. So Mr. Geisel, who wrote kind of the whimsical stories that everybody knows, um, like Cat in the Hat and um, The Lorax and um, what are some other ones? Oh, Green Eggs and Ham. So, um, so those are not the ones that are that are kind of being taken out of publication. Uh, the other books that they said will all will no longer be published are McElligot's Pool, um, on uh, on Beyond Zebra, and Scrambled Egg Supper. Also, the Cat's Quizzer. Um, and he's kind of known for his kind of rhyming style and fantastical characters, but also in general for some of their positive values, like taking responsibility for the planet that that was in the Lorax. Um, however, in recent years, critics have said that um, some of his works uh, were racist and presented sort of hurtful, stereotypical depictions of certain groups. Um, for instance, in the first title that I mentioned to you, and I think I saw it on Mulberry Street, um, one of the characters is, are, is described as a China man and has lines for eyes and wears a pointed hat, carries chopsticks and a bowl of rice. He's, he's also painted yellow in some um, books. Um, editions published in the 70s changed the reference from a China man to a Chinese man. Um, and if I ran the zoo, two characters from there uh, are from the African island of Yurka. They're depicted as shirtless, shoeless, and resembling monkeys. Um, so at any rate, uh, uh, recently a school district in Virginia um, uh, on the internet, um, there's been articles about that where um, they said they had advised schools to de-emphasize Dr. Seuss on Read Across America Day, which is a national literacy program for elementary age kids that takes place each year on March 2nd, um, which is the anniversary of Mr. Giesel's birth, your birthday too. Um, so at any rate, um, they had said research in recent years has revealed strong racial undertones in many books written and illustrated by Dr. Seuss. Um, and that's what the, the Loudoun country, uh, County Public Schools pu uh, public statement was. So 
to sum it all up, the concern is not new. He's not the first author in recent decades, actually, that scholars and educators and librarians have um, looked at to sort of reevaluate children's classics that contain what they view as unhelpful stereotypes and caricatures. Um, another example of another author would be like editions of Tintin and Babar, which I remember when I was a kid, um, they've long been accused of promoting like a colonialist or an imperialistic viewpoint because, and they've been withdrawn from some libraries uh, because of criticism that their European authors uh, depicted anybody who was not white as kind of a, a non-white character kind of as savages. So that's their reasoning behind it. Um, so they're kind of really, if you see what children's publishers and, and different literary estates are trying to do is walk kind of that delicate line between preserving an author's legacy and the kind of the time they wrote in while recognizing certain aspects of a writer's work might be out of step with current sort of social norms or cultural norms. Um, so now it's my time to ask you a question after I told you kind of all that big background on that. Um, what's the right thing to do here as a Christian? How is a, how, how is a Christian to love and serve their neighbor? Like, am I a bad parent or grandparent if, I, if I'm reading Dr. Seuss to my child? Can you help kind of put it in a Christian context for us? Because this is, this is a sticky issue, I think. Well, I, I think if you live by the cancel, you'll die by the cancel. I think this is a failed. This 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 is. We all sort of marveled at how out of touch with reality postmodernism was. Like you know, like if you get pulled over and you tell the cop, "Hey, I self-identify as a person driving 55," and the cop right shows you the um, the speed gun and you're driving 80. Like I'm sorry, you were actually driving 80. Well, I felt like I was driving 55. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to stop until someone stops it. And at, we're, we're at the point where I don't think anyone has the courage to stop it right now. Okay? We stop what, for clarification? Stop. Canceling, folks. Mm. So yeah. what we're doing is we're taking literature and then we're bringing it into our time. And then we're prescribing it on our mor morals and the like. And we're trying to force it into it. And if it doesn't fit, then we're we're dismissing it as racist and counseling it. And not just a few books, but all the books and the author itself. And we're not actually taking people the way we'd like to be taken. Uh, let's use um, let's use President Washington for a second. Here's mm -hmm. a great man. Now owns slaves, but great man. Um, now we're taking our morality, our current morality, and imposing it upon him. And because he did, he, he, he lived in a time in which that was acceptable and didn't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Again, our, our 21st century morality is being imposed on that person. Uh, we're even canceling Abraham Lincoln. So some schools in California have changed their name from Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Now, what on earth? Who we cancel Lincoln for? Now this one. Okay, some of these depictions are not helpful. Yeah. Okay, some of the stereotypes not helpful. So you can either not pick up that particular book, or you can explain to your kid what's going on. But um, that's not what's going on. What's going on is if you're canceled, you're out. I mean, you read the definition of canceling from Urban Dictionary yesterday, last week. You're like done. When Superman you're was finished. canceled. Yeah, when yeah. Superman was canceled, yeah. I was very upset about Superman being. I know. I'm I as know. upset about my buddy who I share a birthday with. But what right. we're going to end up with is everybody being canceled. I'm just. Luther could be canceled too. He said some not sweet stuff. Right. Well, I, I, I don't imagine he would. I mean, yeah. he's already, they just haven't gotten to it yet. Yeah. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to stop that. What I mean by that is um, we're just going to say um, that's not how we're going to handle people. We're not going to be those people. We're going to forgive those who sin and confess their sin. And otherwise we're going to cut 
generally cut people a break. Um, we're going to try to evaluate them based upon their time that they were born in. Um, and here, I think the golden rule is important too. Uh, do unto others as you like to do unto them. Well, then another way of doing it is like to do other, unto other people's work as you'd like your own work to be evaluated. Mm -hmm. So if you want somebody in 50 years from now to cut you some slack because you weren't work enough for them 100 years later, yeah. you better cut some people some slack. I, I just simply think that this is not, I don't believe that this is capable of sustaining the amount of, of hate and judgment. Sooner or later, one of these people who are, who are a big person in the movement is going to get taken down by this. Um, sooner or later, well, look, my son told me a story about um, a Twitter war that occurred based on, on um, gaming. That the game, uh, the game company Riot, who puts out League of Legends, um, a, 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 a sort of um, one of the announcers for their former announcers for their sporting events, their esports events, basically just said, you know, all of their staff members, all, all of their commentators are white, so very white, so white, white, white. And that was her Twitter. Mm -hmm. And the reaction that it was gotten was generally from Americans, oh yeah, cheering her on. But from Europeans, was like, hold up, wait. One of these persons is a Swede. One of these persons is a German. One of these persons is, and, and there you go. So mm -hmm. for, for Europe, it's more important your nationality than the color of your skin, okay? I just don't think it's sustainable. For Seuss, maybe you should explain those pictures. Or maybe you should explain, or maybe if that's an offensive book, don't pick up that book. But um, try not to judge. Look, um, your grandmother's a saint. You just uh, sort of buried her. So my grandmother was a great lady, but she had some antiquated beliefs. I still loved her, but she had some antiquated beliefs. She's still grandma. Mm -hmm. She had some antiquated beliefs. All right. Um, should she have been canceled? Never. She was a product of her time. We might want to remember that when our time is judged some 100 years from now. Maybe we should show some graciousness, some forgiveness. There's the Christian answer, mercy and grace, rather than Jesus is for all, even sinners. But what we got right now is a Phariseeism is a, thank God I'm not like that racist. Or whatever color of skin is currently on the decline for this group. Your final thoughts. Hope well, I, I would, I would just say as an educator, um, I actually um, enjoyed some of those moments um, with my kids uh, where we would come across something that was not helpful. And then we would use that as an opportunity to discuss it. Um, I don't believe I, you know, I, I think it's perfectly fine if the um, <clears throat> the Seuss Foundation pulled some of those books simply because they weren't helpful. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, I think that you are not going to save the world. I mean, I don't know in the past when we've gotten rid of books where that's ever actually fixed things. Um, I don't think removing all books that could or may or may not be racist is going to fix racism in our country. Um, I do think uh, educating our kids and sitting down and taking the time to talk to them about what's going on, just as you said. So, I mean, I wouldn't with a three-year-old pick up that book and try to have that, that discussion, right? But um, certainly parents and educators should be equipped to um, be ready for those conversations. I don't think that throwing out anything that could possibly uh, be racist is going to be helpful because how else are you going to teach about the wrongs of racism if you don't point to examples of it? Um, so that's kind of that's kind of my take, my take of it, yeah. and to explain and explain the history so that we don't repeat it. Um, so yeah. how do we know? How do we know the thoughts of individuals in the past if we're so busy trying to import them into our modern context that we don't mm -hmm. actually figure out what their struggles and thoughts and the like were? These are people of their time who are who who should be judged by their time, not by our time. 
Right. Agreed. Um, so um, that would I don't be think my that's take fair. on it. Yeah, that would be my take on it. Mercy. 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 Well, you're speaking from an educator's point, point of view. Like if you cancel books, and we do this, we uh, some some Lutherans have done this with with the all theology that they found unacceptable. Yeah. Yeah. They they basically sound like they want to burn those books. But how do we how do we learn from those authors, or how do we learn what not? Um, I'm, I mean, if there's a gym, there's a gym, and we'll only find that gym by actually being able to read the person, or they may reinforce why such a person needs to be. I'm not sure burning a book or canceling a book is ever helpful. Even the most evil books gives us a picture into the mind of the most evilest people. Yep. Not as a guidebook on emulation, but on simply what were they thinking, how are, how do they fit in historically, and the like. Yeah, but that's why God gives children parents, though, too, right? In the instance of Dr. Seuss, is he get he there are parents in that vocation who are there to guide and educate their children, and that's what they should do. Um, uh, Erica Jacoby is the executive director of Higher Things. She is the big boss lady. <laughs> Um, of the organization, as her staff calls her. Uh, thank you, Erica, for your time. Thank you. It's not sustainable. This much hatred, hating hateful people is still hating. Um, mercy, grace, love, forgiveness, best construction. This is the way of the Christian faith. Lest Jesus cancel us, too. I'm Pastor George Borkart. I hope this has been a a thought-provoking discussion. If you don't like any of the comments or thoughts that we've met, we've had, then rip us up in the uh, in the comments. We're big people. She's a big boss lady, and I'm an old pastor. We're able to handle it. Um, this has been another Higher Things video short.